I want to call this meeting of the Carpentersville Village Board to order. Terry, would you please call the roll? Trustee Burroway? Here. Trustee Stevens? Here. Trustee Hunter? Here. Trustee Sabi? Here. Here. Uh, we don't have our invocator here this evening, so we will just rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we have no proclamations, congratulatory resolutions, or awards. No appointments, confirmations, or administrations of oath. Uh, Terry, do we have any commenters? All right, if you are a commenter tonight, remember that you address the board as a whole, not any individual member, and that uh, you have five minutes. We ask you to please maintain uh, talking about village business only. And Terry, go ahead then and call the first person. Israel Talavera. Well, the reason I'm here, it's for the first time. Since I've been living in the neighborhood for 15 years, this is the first time that I've had to come bring a problem that is an ongoing problem for many years, but now it's getting completely out of hand. And it has to do with, uh, I've gone to ordinance, and uh, twice I reported the same problem, and there's very little they can do for me. They're saying there's nothing we can do. We don't have the authority to let the people there open up the garage and let us see. So I've waited two weeks and so forth to see if anything was being done. So this week I went to the fire department. Because I work with kids, I work, I'm a school bus driver. Now I'm, I'm retired, but I drive for school bus District 300. So I deal with kids on wheelchairs, disabilities, and everything you can imagine. I deal with them. But the problem in this home is, next to us, is that the man, for many years it was rented different people renting their home. There was good people, and then there was troublemakers. There was those that were using drugs, and I approached the owner of the home because there was damage done to my car uh, because of drugs and playing with tossing sticks to dogs and having the dog retreated. One morning, I woke up, and they, re they took the the stick that was used for retreating for a dog went right to my windshield. I had to replace it, it cost me money. I brought it up to the owner and there was nothing he did because these are transients coming in and out. So, I, uh, down the road we had another family moving there, young people there using drugs. I approached the owner about it and he was decent enough, he didn't know what was going on, but he was decent enough to evict them, move them out within a week's time. So that worked, worked out fine. So it's been a different things happening because it was a rental home. Now finally, two years ago, the home was put up for uh, repossess. The people bought it. And now that the, the new owners decided without checking ordinances or whatever in the village, decided to establish a business in the garage. Now, I've been told that this is residential area yes, it is. and businesses are not supposed to be held in a garage. So, when, when the people from ordinance came, after I gave him a call, it took two weeks, he finally came to the home and I was saying, how come it's taking two weeks to check this out? Fortunately for me, that particular day, I'm looking out the window and I see indeed uh, one of the drivers from ordinance. 
Now he got out, and along the house, there's 13, 14 uh, mowers. Plus he's got riding mowers too, along the house. So when the man from Odin's came, he came out of the car, he took pictures. There was a, a, a car that was left there wrecked, totally wrecked. So he came and took pictures. As he was taking pictures, I noticed the wife came out real quick to approach him. So to sort of stop him from, the husband was not there. But that same night or the day after, the car was removed immediately. All them snow, I, all alongside the house, snow blowers, uh, lawn mowers were dumped, put into the garage. The garage is packed, packed. You can't get nothing in there because it's all lawn mowers, which to me is a fire hazard. It's a safety hazard. It's a health hazard to, because there's kids there. One of the kids, if I'm not mistaken, goes to a school for needy, needy, needy children, okay? So there's two, two, three kids. Now that's an attached garage which fumes can ignite a fire because he got gasoline in there. He set it up as a repair shop. She smokes, and I see her going in and out of the garage smoking. Now, I brought it to the attention of ordinance, and they said, well, we don't have the, the power to have them open the door to do something about it. So I said, wait a minute, I can't believe it. Because it's a fire hazard, it's a health hazard, <coughs> what, and, and it's a business. It's, he's conducting a business, there's pickups coming in there left and right with, low, with uh, lawn mowers for him to repair and sell. It's a repair and sell operation there. And a motion for additional sorry. time. Yeah, I'll second. Okay, you can, you can continue. The board has uh, okay. allowed it short. you to give I, more I time. I about the time. Okay. But this whole thing is, it's a rest, they're next to us. When that garage opens up, the fumes, because the home faces, the garage faces our yard. My wife suffers from asthma. And the smell of dip that comes out of the garage is incredible. But we're looking for uh, how to deal with this problem because we're not getting any, uh, the ordinances can't do anything for us. The fire department says the same thing too. I was thinking about going to the health department the next, but the fire department told me to come to you so you can hear me out. It is a business what he's running in there. He's making money. He's selling and buying and repairing. And this is residential. So how much more can I go? I, that's about all I can say. But it's uh, disturbing because it's, in, it's an operation weekly from Friday through Saturday to Sunday when he's around in and out, pickups going in there with lawn mowers, tractors, in and out, people buying, selling, and so forth. It's uh, all day long, because he's repairing these lawn mowers. So all day long he's early in the morning, sometimes till late at night, running that. I've been told we'll call the police. But you know, I've gone beyond and so I'm here for the first time to see what can be done about this because it's very disturbing to see this operation in and out. It's an operation in and out. It's when he's not there, she calls him on the phone and we can see how much does he want for, the, for who's waiting to buy lawn mowers. That's the big problem we're having in our, in our, in our home right now. I'm sorry to take oh, to take the most Do we time. have this the information from the place well, he's talking about? Make sure you leave your name and phone number and someone will contact you tomorrow from representing the board okay. and we'll discuss how we can proceed with this. Yeah, so the, the, we don't normally answer questions here tonight, right. but we will the manager is sitting right here and he'll deal with this as soon as he can in the morning. Because like I say, this is an operation that's a continuous thing. And my wife says, well, maybe, maybe he'll put us, no, this is getting, it's not that even bringing bicycles in there that should be in the junkyard, but they're coming in for your repairs <coughs> and so. so that's
that's why I'm here. It's the first time I've been here, so I had to do it because the fire department said go to this meeting. Well, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Jerry? Okay, well, that would conclude then our public comments. Uh, the next item would be consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There'll be no separate discussion of those items unless the trustee so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Any items to be removed? Hearing none. A motion to pass the consent agenda. Second. Motion Paul, second Ginger. Uh, Terry, call the roll, please. Trustee Cabby? Yes. 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 Okay, the next item will be reports of uh, manager, officers, commissions, and staff. Mark, reports this evening. We have one tonight uh, from Police Chief Kilborn. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, at the last meeting, we had two announcements about activities that were occurring uh, this weekend, and I want to give you an update on, on what did occur. Uh, we did have the drug take back event. Uh, that occurred on Saturday. Officer Polarski was here, and they had approximately 65 pounds of unwanted or expired uh, drugs that were taken back. These drugs uh, will be uh, transported or have been transported to the DEA, and they will incinerate them, which is the preferred method of getting rid of uh, drugs that are no longer used. Um, and then also on Saturday night, we had the bolathon occurring at uh, the bowling lanes behind us. And at that event, uh, there was a little more than $5,750 collected for Special Olympics. Uh, so that was a uh, second successful event on the same day. Um, and lastly, upcoming is May 20th, Friday, Friday morning at the Dunkin' Donuts on Randall Road will be the Cop on Top event, which is another fundraiser for Special Olympics. And Special Olympics uh, provides sports training and competition for more than 22,000 people with intellectual disabilities across the state of Illinois. Illinois Special Olympics is the community organization that law enforcement officers across the state have chosen to be our charity that we raise funds for. And the Cop on Top event, as I said, May 20th, Friday morning, uh, is our big statewide event. Uh, so there'll be police officers on Cop of Dunkin' Donuts uh, throughout the state. Uh, myself and some of the other command staff members will be taking our time on top of Dunkin' Donuts. We certainly thank Dunkin' Donuts for giving us uh, the venue to uh, collect funds. Um, they are very wonderful in assisting us in that. And every morning that I'm on top of Dunkin' Donuts during this annual event, I think I really need to get myself a Dunkin' Donuts because <laughs> there's a lot of traffic running through there. So, Is uh, this the one on Randall Road? On Randall Road. The okay. one uh, on Randall Road by um, Menards. Okay. Okay? What's the date again? I'm sorry. What's the date again? May 20th, Friday, Friday morning. Wouldn't that just be too cliche, though, if you had a Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just curious uh, for the 65 pounds worth of drugs that you uh, collected. Yes. How does that compare to the last couple that we've had? Uh, you know, I didn't get the past totals, but it, we've been pretty consistent. I was going to say, it, if I remember pretty consistent. right, it sounds... Uh, we do sometimes get an assist from uh, Chief Dean Stigmeyer in South Beloit who uh, will collect drugs and, and bring them down to us uh, <laughs> instead of holding an event at South Beloit. This time I don't think we had him involved. So. Okay. And I think it's a good reminder, please do not flush drugs down the toilet, dr uh, drugs you're not going to use. Save them for these events. It gets into our water supply. Even if when we try to purify the water and dispense it uh, as uh, sewage water, it's still in there. Mm -hmm. So it really does a lot of damage. Save it for these events. You know, we have them every year, and they dispose of them properly. It's, uh, I think, two or three times a year, actually. I was going to say, yeah. it, do you have a date for the next no, one I don't. at all? No, it's not it's set. It's in the fall. Yes. So save them. Save them yep. up. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. That was Appreciate a bit silly. OK, then Chief. reports. Uh, Don, any report? To um, <coughs> commissioner in court, <coughs> uh, Jelkies Creek. Uh, Fox River Watershed Coalition will be meeting May 9th, uh, so that's coming up. And uh, for that, we've got the, I got another uh, sign that we're going to, you know, present to them uh, with the <coughs> website on the bottom that will 
put you in touch with uh, Jelkies Creek. So we're moving on that. Uh, and then for uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, Quadcom Jets, uh, I believe the next meeting is uh, May 24th or something like that, Chief? Uh, the 25th, I believe. 25th, well, I hate to say it, but Pat, I'll be on a fishing trip. <laughs> <laughs> So, right. so we'll have to fill in for that. <laughs> Thank you. That's all. Paul? Uh, we had a business development commission meeting last week of uh, April. A um, couple things that came out of that. Uh, we did learn that the Dominic store was bought by an investment group. We've, uh, the village has reached out to them to see what their plans are to do with that building. Uh, certainly would like to get, you know, another store uh, into that Dominic's, uh, that old Dominic's uh, site. So uh, we're monitoring that. Uh, but the most, most of the meeting was spent uh, working with um, the uh, group that came out to do the branding, the rebranding of the village. And they pre presented us with a proposal that I think you guys have all received at this point. And it will be discussed in more detail at a future meeting. But just at a high level, they broke it up into two phases, uh, which we could do part of it this year and maybe the second part next year. We'll have to talk about that and see do we have the funds for it and are we uh, ready to move forward. Uh, but really, the uh, phase one and two will be more uh, going out into the community, doing uh, uh, control groups or look at talking with uh, different business owners. Um, and seeing what their um, feelings are about the village. Does it match what we identified as the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? Um, and then developing a market pr marketing program from there. Uh, phase two, and that would be a, take about 28% per, of the uh, time and uh, dollars that would be dedicated to that. Uh, phase two would um, uh, happen at a future date and then we would get into the rebranding program of the village uh, completely. We don't know how that's going to look just yet. That will be based off the information that they bring from uh, uh, the phase one uh, part of the plan. So um, that's really, uh, you know, I don't want to get into too much detail until you've all had a chance to look at it and had a chance to ask questions and then we'll roll it out to the village and uh, go from there as far as what our next steps. So, uh, but I think the meetings have been pretty productive. Oh, and by the way, the uh, Business Development Commission did approve moving forward with this by majority vote. So uh, we did get approval from the majority of the Business Development Commission to continue this branding effort. Um, so I think uh, we're going to have to talk about this. Do we have the funds to do it? This phase one for this year. Uh, there's some options available to us. Um, that we may not have to use taxpayer money. We could use uh, perhaps some of the gaming revenue, but I, that's still part of a larger discussion that we did not have, Ed, that while you were gone, that was on the agenda. And I think Mark was uh, on, a, uh, uh, on a trip. Um, well, um, what kind of trip was it, Mark? <laughs> it was conference. conference. There you go. Manager's conference in Tennessee. And uh, it was on the agenda, but there was just wasn't enough information to move forward <laughs> with it. So we'll come back and talk about where we're going to spend that gaming money and consider this as one of the items that will be on there and decide from there if we want to move forward. So uh, I think at that point that we could really get into more detail, then I can give you a better report and where we're going to go from there. Thank you. Uh, Pat? Um, well, first off, I wanted to uh, say thank you to everyone that participated in the Arbor Day celebration this past Friday. Fortunately, I wasn't able to attend. I had some family matters in Wisconsin, but um, I did see the pictures, and I wanted to thank um, Public Works. They did a great job. Uh, the day before, I did go and help um, our commission member, Don Quiner, got some bags, and of course, the um, uh, little seedling if you will and then there was some other little items to put in there and we just we did a real quick assembly line and got those ready for them the next day uh, Dennis who provided us with uh, another tree um, Gary Zwick who came and filled in for those of us that uh, weren't able to attend and of course a big thank you to Don Quiner for um, as always organizing that event and um, saw this year I'm sorry I couldn't make it went out a little extra there and we had I guess a great horned owl and a, um, I think it was a red-tailed hawk 
that uh, somebody brought for the kids. They must have just loved it. So it looked like uh, it was a little cloudy, a little damp, but it looked like everybody had a great time. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm glad this is an annual event. We got another tree planted in the park and uh, was, uh, I think, uh, another really successful day. So uh, looking forward to next year. So for the parks, the next meeting is May 9th coming up, Public Works, 6.30. Um, we'll have some discussion there for a little recap probably on the Arbor Day and a few other things. And then I wanted to move on to special events, if I could. So we've got our first event coming up on May 14th in Carpenter Park. This is the District 300 Middle School Jazz Bands. It's a kickoff uh, concert for the summer. I know the Rotary Club is sponsoring and a few other uh, uh, folks. And they're going to, it's going to be at from 6 to 8 and it'll, they'll have live music, they're gonna have games, a dunk tank, there'll be some arts and crafts, and the flyer says much more. Plus I know there'll be some uh, food there also. So we're really looking forward to this, and I hope it's a success, I hope everybody comes. It'd be great to hear the kids play. I'm sure they're gonna do a great job. Uh, the next event coming up would be June 3rd, it'll be our first movie in the park. For this first movie is Inside Out, which I happen to see with my grandson, very cute, in Carpenter Park. There'll be food and games there. Uh, the movie starts at 8.20 as it gets to be like twilight, if you will, but uh, they'll have some things to do for the kids beforehand too. So we'll have our first movie, the first of four, I should say. Then coming up shortly after, June 11th, we'll have our uh, third annual uh, yard sale at Carpenter Park. Forms are online. If you want to pull $10, bring a table, chairs, clean out your garages, your attics, whatever you'd like to sell. And, um, if, and I believe we also have forms, uh, Hitesh, at the finance department here also, if you'd like to stop in. So we've got some organizations that are going to be coming, and also we'll have food there. Uh, a face painter, and we're hoping for some music also that day for a little added extra stuff for the yard sale. And whatever you don't want to take home that you didn't sell, uh, we've arranged for another charity truck to come around 3.30 or so. It'll be 9 to 4. Uh, you can set up as early as 7, and uh, we'll break it down by 4. The charity truck will come, and um, they'll take away anything that you don't want to take back home. So looking forward to that also. So these are the first of going to be several events in the park this summer. You're probably going to hear me talk all summer long about this stuff, myself, Ginger. Um, but we are very excited for this slate. Um, we, I, it certainly needs board approval. Um, they're submitting the permits as we speak. Um, but in September, we might have a circus that will come into the park which would be kind of nice and very reasonable prices for the adults and the kids. So uh, they've been around 79 years and I think it wouldn't be another nice addition for another event and then just kind of move on into the October cross in October. So there'll be something to do almost every month uh, this season, so which is very nice. Um, I did want to mention one final thing. Um, there has been, uh, there's always a lot of uh, misinformation, in my humble opinion, on Facebook. Um, but we had Slide the City, which will be coming in July. And we had people out there posting that it's $40 for one ride. This is not true. I spoke to the person that's organizing it. They're working on a price point and packages. Um, but the, a couple of rides may be like $15 to start, including the tubes. So it's, it's not $40 a ride, folks. I'm sorry that information got out there. Certainly wouldn't want anyone not to attend because, again, misinformation and, uh, you know, it's kind of costly. But I think they're going to uh, be reasonable. If they do well on Saturday, they'll be here again on Sunday. And I think it'll probably uh, be a lot of fun. I could look forward to uh, seeing everybody use it. So, and that would conclude my report for Pat, special how, lo oh. how long is that, how long is that slide? 4,000 4, feet? Something. About a quarter mile, was yeah, it? Yeah, I think, And it starts yeah. at the top of Maple, so it's going yeah, to so you're gonna pick up a lot of speed. Over by Brook, Brookdale. Yeah, you will, and it'll come Rosewood down around the curve. Rosewood at the top, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it'll, it's one of the longest slides, I think, that they've set up. This isn't the steepest so one I've done, too. Yeah, that's I'm right. I'm looking forward so to So it that. should be a lot of fun, you know. So, and we should I all think go down together. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I think, um, again, I want to just say they're working on the pricing, and I think there'll be an affordable package 
for everyone so that they'll be able to enjoy it and they will supply their own food and vendors and things for that event so so be fun in, in July so is do I understand that if they sell out for Saturday if they do well on Saturday they go they'll to be Sunday? back on Sunday yeah. so it's all advanced tickets Full, you think. will be able to buy I believe advanced tickets I don't know where yet Ginger they'll they'll notify us as soon as they get everything squared well, away I only ask for clarification because how will, when will we know that they're going to do it on Sunday too yeah I, that's a good question really so that's why I, I'm yeah, thinking we'll that if they sell out, out yeah. online yeah that's early. A, a really good question yeah I think so. it did have to do with the advanced tickets what they said yeah. in the presentation but you, if you, want uh, you can buy tickets there too they think they said but yeah. I think it's going to depend on the advanced tickets as I am I again in my humble opinion I think it's going to be a very big event event I've heard a lot of people talking about it now everyone's aware that it was in an Algonquin and I think they're kind of excited to have it here and the location as people are starting to realize it, you know as Jeff pointed out that hill and, and Paul that uh, that could be a lot of fun for them so so look yeah, at all of these kids are going yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah gotta come for slide this in yeah so. got thumbs up back there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes my report Ed. okay well our agenda is kind of short today. We have no old business, no new business. Uh, so we're ready for trustee reports. We'll start with uh, Jeff this evening. Well, I'm happy to see so many students out here tonight. Did many of you <laughs> procrastinate like I used to back in the day? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's right. All right, at least you're here. We're happy to have you. So um, I wanted to make everybody aware there is a blood drive going on at Randall Oaks Dental on uh, Randall Road, right by Randall Roadhouse, across from the Dunkin' Donuts there. It's a combination blood drive and Star Wars party. It's on May the 4th. You know, May the 4th be with you. That's the, the Star Wars holiday. So this Thursday, they still have spots available. So um, I've gotten calls from a lot of different blood banks recently, and we are very low on blood supply. So if anybody can come out to Randall Oaks, and you get a you give a pint of blood, and you get a free pint of ice cream at Culver's. So that's that's... Cool. This, this Thursday, May the 4th. Um, and I wanted to give a, a thank you to uh, Officer Joe Polarski for the bolt-on he did this Saturday. I know he does an awful lot with Special Olympics. He does the uh, jumps in the, the icy cold <laughs> lake every year. He does a lot of things in the community and a lot for Special Olympics, and we thank him for doing the bolt-on on Saturday. And uh, that's it. Uh, it is on Thursday, Thurs which is oh, the 5th. Tomorrow. Oh, the, no, no, sorry, it's tomorrow. It's so tom oh. oh, yeah, tomorrow. It's tomorrow, okay. May the 4th? Yes. Tomorrow, tomorrow, May the 4th. There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so then it is yes. tomorrow. Tomorrow, May the 4th, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pat? Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to mention. I wanted to say thank you to uh, Public Works. Uh, Public Works Week is May 15th through the 21st. Um, we have a, a wonderful guy in our sign shop who is now uh, has the ability to create banners, as many of you may have seen on the uh, bridge. And uh, it's, he was able to do some for uh, the police. And I know our fire department has fire safety banners. And now we've got for Public Works Week. And they really came out nice. Looks very nice there. So I can't thank him enough. And then I also wanted to mention that uh, the village is once again sponsoring our uh, Monarch Butterfly Program. You can pick up uh, two packets of seeds, one for the butterfly garden itself, one for the milkweed uh, that they like, um, and they're, they're available at Public Works, and just have to go down, pick them up. Planting season will be here soon, and we hope you take advantage, and uh, we can do our part as we can to save the monarch. So, and that will conclude my report. John? I have no report tonight. Thank you. I have no report either. Oh, always me. Um, yeah, the banners really look nice that the uh, Public Works put up. They really pop out uh, when you're crossing the bridge. Um, I just wanted to uh, give a congrats to Laura Denton. I, I don't know if you guys saw the email, but she finally got off the waiting list. And uh, she's, a, uh, she's in a wheelchair. She's a handicapped person in our town. And she's been on the waiting list for God knows, a couple years now uh, with the township uh, to provide the Ride and Cane program. Um, and through her efforts and working uh, with Ed, myself, Manager Rooney, and then the rest of you, you know, we've kept you guys up to date what's going on. Um, we've uh, made uh, some funding available to the township to help with this program. Um, and they expanded uh, that to include people from Carpentersville who have been on a waiting list who 
need to get to doctor's offices and work and things like that. So um, I just really wanted to give Laura uh, kudos for kind of spearheading this whole thing and getting us all uh, interested and willing to help her uh, try to make some sense of where $4 million in property tax revenue goes for that the township collects. and. Uh, they can't fund this program entirely so but hopefully you know they'll fi get that figured out and uh we won't have this problem in the future and um, she really stayed with it too paul she did it's really commendable yeah we actually were able to bring her into one of our um, committee of the whole meetings as a uh, videotape uh you know uh, or um, as a live conference skype. yeah skype skype yeah and uh she was able to explain the situation i thought that was very helpful for the board to hear so and I thank the board too for being uh, understanding and looking at this realistically and, and manager Rooney especially he was the one that came up with the idea to figure out a way to get this funded so thank you for all for all your efforts and that that's all I have for a report thank you well surprisingly I have no remarks tonight I know I always seem to have the most but this evening I don't actually have any so uh, the next item on our agenda after trustee reports would be that we need to have a closed session of the board uh, for sections 2C1, 2C2, and 2C11 of the uh, Open Meetings Act. And uh, I need a motion to adjourn to executive session. A motion session. to adjourn. Motion, I'll, Ginger. I'll second. To second. To executive Pat. session. To closed uh, session. Okay. Closed session. Closed session. Uh, Terry, would you call the roll? Yes. 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 All right. We will move to closed session. We will reconvene later to have a uh, discussion on.